This is Bob Davis 321, back looking at the uh, 8x8x8 cube. You can now see it with the lights on. Uh, that's because I changed a uh, few resistors on the back side. I'll show you that in just a minute. Also, uh, on the color LED panels, I found a way to test them. I wrote a test program as well as the rain program. And the reason why they were shifting colors on the way down through, uh, the rightmost column was missing blue halfway. And then three columns had another issue that caused them to mess up. Uh, I think it was a green wasn't making contact most of the time on those three columns. And it has to do with the lead length being three different lengths. Anyways, I want to turn on the lights. It doesn't get very dark because the sun's out nowadays to turn off the lights. But like I said, you can see this even with lights on now. And uh, what I wanted to show you is the change. It's, well, won't focus in that close. Those eight resistors right there. Top left corner, uh, they come as 500 ohms and I changed them all to 50 ohms. And you say, whoa, it can't be that low a value. Well, actually it can. Uh, you have to understand that uh, on IC outputs, they don't have as much drive current high. So the reality of the matter is, if you're using common cathode LEDs, you can actually run them without any current limiting resistor, but I would never recommend that. But you can use 50 or 100 ohms without any problem. Uh, the mathematics involved, your LEDs, these lights, at about 3.3 volts. Uh, a high is not 5 volts. A high is only about 4.5 volts. So there's only about 1 volt difference. At 10 milliamps, that's 100 ohms. At 20 milliamps, that's 50 ohms. So yes, you can use 50 ohm resistors in a common cathode display. Common anode is a different story because the uh, IC chips can drive all the way to ground. They have more drive current low than they do high. Same thing over here. You can't see it, but I'm using 50 ohm resistors for the uh, color test. Uh, some of the solutions I'm working on now is the panels. I think I'm going to actually build the resistors right into the legs of the panels. Uh, that'll simplify the wiring. And uh, as far as breadboarding the color panels, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it because it's just too complicated. So I think in order to get more than about four panels to work, I'll have to build some sort of final unit. And here is, again, it doesn't focus that well. One of the RGB panels being built right now on a piece of blue line. Yep, that's all for now. Talk to you again another time.